It is Youth and Camp Sunday all combined into one. So, since it's Camp Sunday, I'm going to do some camp housekeeping slides first before I get into our message, and that way it is um, separated from the message. So, <laughs> so camp. Uh, this year, our camp theme is keep the receipt. And then our camp dates, you kind of can't see it very well on that screen. But uh, day camp, which is our first through second grade, is going to be June 5th, which is a Saturday at all day camp. So these are grades that your child is going to be entering in the next school year when you're thinking of registering your child for camp. Do you want to register them for the grades that they're going into in fall of 2021? So day camp, they have to be going into first or second grade. And of course, after that, we'll have high school camp, which will be June 6th through the 11th. So those are 10th through 12th grade. Any high schooler that wants to be a junior staff for elementary week that immediately follows, they must attend high school camp in order to apply to be a junior staff. And then after high school camp, of course, our early elementary, which is third and fourth grade, uh, this camp is the first time campers that are young can stay overnight on the campgrounds. Um, so that is a fun time for them. This is one of the camps that our parents are the most nervous about sending their kids overnight. So let me assure you, the camp deans for this elementary camp are amazing. Um, they have been doing the elementary camp for many years. They are um, parents themselves and also youth leaders in their church. Um, so I assure you, your youth are in very good hands for the early elementary overnight camp. Uh, the camp dean is also an EMT, and we always have a EMT nurse on the campgrounds at all times. So just to kind of assure the mamas who may be nervous about sending their child overnight for the first time, let me tell you, they will have so much fun. And then after elementary, um, fifth and sixth grade will join in the middle of that week, and then they go till the 18th, I believe. And then after that is our junior high camp, which is uh, seventh through ninth grade, will be the last week of June, um, the 25th? 20th through 25th. If I was in the eye exam thing, I would fail right now because I can't see that print back there. Um, so those are just the dates. Um, and then the camp, the, each camp obviously has cost for it. Um, we do have scholarships also available. So we never want a child not to be able to go to camp due to inability to pay. So please always check with Pastor Ryan and I and let us know if you want to send your child to camp and need help with a camp scholarship. And then the top seven camp needs. Um, I just created this top seven needs um, just from being involved in the administration part of camp for a few years. Um, the camp needs prayers. Um, the camp leaders and deans and executive board that has to make decisions for camp. Um, some of those decisions are tough to make. Obviously right now with COVID, last year we had to cancel camp. So this year we're still in that, you know, if or if not to have camp. Right now camp is still a go of course, but any, anything can change. Those decisions are very difficult to make. So just continue to please keep the camp administration and the camp deans and prayers as they prep for camp this year. Uh, scholarships, as I mentioned, is also a huge need. Last year, our church alone scholarshiped over 20 children, not last year, the year before. <laughs> I'm not used to not having a camp year. So the last time we had camp, our church alone scholarshiped over 20 children to send to camp. So scholarships are always a big need, and I'm sure this year is going to be one of those areas as well. Volunteers. There is always something that somebody can volunteer for at camp. So even if you're not one that wants to be around kids or be a camp leader or a team leader, we still have a lot of things that we need volunteers for behind the scenes and on the campgrounds. So we look for volunteers of all ages. Again, if you have a child that's in high school, um, going into high school, they can volunteer as a junior staff, which is on my next need. Um, if you're entering 10th or 12th, we need you. Junior staff is a huge, huge help for our elementary camp weeks. Um, if your child likes to do dishes and clean and do all that stuff, that's where you want to send them. If they don't, we still encourage you to send them because it teaches them responsibility. 
So, uh, registrations. We need to register camps in order for camp to be successful. This is a very difficult year in projecting how our camp is going to be. So we need to um, help with getting registrations, getting the word out about camp, and inviting friends to come to camp with your kids. We have a lot of kids that bring a friend to camp with them, especially our elementary kids, and it is a great experience for them. Um, so don't hesitate to, if you have a friend that your child might want to bring to camp with them. Cleaning items. Um, to help the camp um, keep as clean and sanitized as possible, um, to kind of help keep with COVID and you know sanitation and things, to the best of our ability, um, we will create a wish list. I was going to have one done today, but I didn't have it made because I haven't got the list from um, our camp kitchen manager. Um, but that is one thing that we will be needing, of course, is um, cleaning items to help keep the camp clean. And then lastly on my list is bedding. I don't know, I think there was one camp day, the Sunday we went to Walmart three times in one day because kids kept forgetting their bedding as they arrived. So um, bedding is something that just a twin sheet um, covers the mattress of the bunks and a um, pillow. That's one of the most common things that kids forget to bring to camp with them. And these kids come from Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas, so it's not something the church pastor can just run back to church or run back home and grab sheets and a pillow. Um, so that's something if you see twin bedding um, or pillows um, on sale or if you have some at home um, that you would like to donate, that is something that we always need at camp every year. Every camp, every grade, you know, elementary to high school, someone forgets bedding. <laughs> so... Um, so those are just some housekeeping things. Um, at lunch today, um, if you have more questions about camp, definitely um, questions about registrations, questions about volunteering. Like I said, there's so many areas we need volunteers, especially you know this year. I think there's going to be a higher need for volunteers um, from camp leader to even just being a dorm mom or a dorm dad, um, which is just making sure the kids go to bed and stay in the cabins um, at night. Um, so there's plenty of areas that we definitely need help. So, like I said, as of right now, camp is still a go, so we are excited. We are trying to get the kids excited, which I think they pretty much are. I asked them this morning in Sunday school room, and they were pretty excited. So, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and move on into our sermon for today, which is also our camp theme, which is keep the receipt. So, have you ever had to return something? What is the most common question that you are asked when you return an item to the store? Do you have the receipt? So a receipt is an important little piece of paper to give you proof that you have purchased something to return or exchange. Most of the time we keep our receipts for big items such as electronics, appliances, furniture, but other times we will just throw it away for minimal things such as our groceries, maybe cleaning supplies or a few household items. So today we're going to continue our sermon series, Even If, and this morning we're going to talk about keeping the receipt, but this receipt is going to be far more valuable and important than any earthly one. Our scripture today is going to be from Romans chapter 1 verses 25. This is also of course our scripture for camp for this theme this year. So I encourage you, if you're a youth, if you see it on there, to write it down and practice memorizing it for camp this year. So our verse, Romans chapter one, verse 25 says, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised, amen. So what does that mean? So let's go back a little bit further in our, a little bit further in our scripture so we can get some context of this verse. So if we jump back a few verses to 16 and 17, it says this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. So you may be asking me, how does this all make sense? What does exchanging truth for a lie and having faith and being righteous all have to do with keeping a receipt for appliances? 
Well, remember when I said that this receipt is far more valuable and important than the earthly receipt? Let's put this into an application. So life is going good. You know the good news mentioned in our verse. You know and believe Jesus is the gift of salvation. You are not ashamed to spread the good news because you have the gift of the Holy Spirit guiding you. You have this receipt of truth that you find. And you firmly believe in it. You put it in your pocket going through with you every day and everywhere you go. You're studying the word, attending worship, going to youth group, maybe praying with friends at school. Life is great with you and Jesus. You want everyone to know about him and so you, and that you have, want them to have the same gift as you, so you go and spread the good news. However, as life goes on and you grow up, you go to school, go to college, go to work, you live life more in this world, you will start learning the lie. The world wants to teach you that God does not exist. The world wants to teach you about evolution and not creation. The world wants to teach you there is, that there can't be a supernatural being because there's no way to prove it. The world wants to teach you nature, natural, not the supernatural. They want to teach you that Bible is just stories and not actual historical events. They want to teach you the lie, but they are teaching it subtle, so subtle since kindergarten. Most of us don't even realize it's being taught to us, or an adult word my husband used last Sunday, indoctrinated. They have indoctrinated you to believe their lie instead of the truth. So I had to take biology and science course to finish my degree last fall, and let me tell you, I've been awakened to more about science than I've ever been before. One thing my professor said that really made me think is this. Science doesn't like God because God cannot be proven. Science is cool, don't get me wrong. Science has helped us find cures for illnesses, create vaccines to prevent illnesses, sent us to space, developed medications to help with debilitating diseases. However, one thing I learned, and you probably have too, is science is still just science. All science is is one scientist trying to disprove the theory of another scientist until all of the scientists are disproving each other. If one scientist can create a theory that no one else can disprove, then it becomes something that is a considered scientific fact. However, if one thing can be disproven in a theory, it's back to the drawing board for the scientist. Many mental health therapy practices used in today's world are scientifically known as a pseudoscience. Does anybody know what pseudoscience means? <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> fake or false science. So it's a false science, you think it's science that works due to a proven theory, when in fact it's not. However, it works in mental health practices often because it adds psychology in tricking our brains. So I've been given meds to stop memories, nightmares, etc., to trick my brain to thinking nothing bad had ever happened to me, because so I wouldn't remember it. It worked for a while, but it was a false science. Why? Because it is telling my brain a lie in order to keep from seeing the truth, to cope with it. You want to know what is not a false science? This right here. The Bible. The Bible has helped me through more mental health crisis, crisis very bad experiences in life, than any science-proven method I have tried. Now, don't hear me saying it if you are struggling mentally, science or psychology help is bad. That is not what I'm saying at all. I have been through several years of psych therapy from the time I was eight and had my last inpatient psych in my 20s. It's helped me, yes, but this right here, this truth is what helped heal me. Some use medications to help heal, and that's okay too. I did for a long time. But God has given people brilliant minds and resources to help with medical science. However, many times you only see the praise be given to the scientist not the God who gave the scientists the resources. So are you connecting the scripture to the lesson? Let's read the scripture again and see if it's making sense. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who was forever praised. Amen. So what is happening, happening so rapidly in today's world? Right now, people are lost, confused, torn between the truth God has given them, and a lie the world is feeding them. 
They have kept the receipt in their pocket, and life has been great, but then trials and tribulations come. The problem we face as Christians is as we battle trials and tribulations in life, we battle trying to discern the truth from the lie. We start to think, I can do this, or I need to do this on my own till I figure this all out. So we take our receipt and put it on our dresser at home. We still believe the truth is there. We still have the gift of the Holy Spirit, but maybe we just need our receipt when we need it and don't need it with us 24-7. So we start to slip away from priorities in life because we are believing the lie little by little, more and more, and don't see where the world is taking us. The sad thing is, as life moves on and we have our receipt and we put it in our pocket when we think we need it, put it on our dresser when we think our things are good, we face obstacles in life. We face choices between activities to strengthen our relationship with Jesus and activities to entertain our own self. Youth and teens struggle between going to youth group or going to sports, going to Sunday morning worship, or working to make an income. We still believe, but struggle through life harder and harder and not sure why. Trials and temptations become greater and greater because our receipt is not always with us. We exchange, exchange the truth, the good news, our own savior for a lie. The enemy is very good at tricking us into deception, deceit, and steering us away. We don't need Jesus anymore. There's something bigger and greater in this world. Jesus can't heal you. You're too broken now. God doesn't love you. You may turn to earthly things to fill a void that is emptying every day because your receipt is still sitting at home on your dresser waiting for you to pick it back up again. But you're confused. The enemy is trying to trick you into believing the lie. Finally, we get to the point where we're cleaning our room. We see this old receipt on our dresser and think, well, that was some good times in my life, but I'm not worthy of this Jesus anymore. And we just throw it away. Our life is tough. But we don't see a need for this receipt anymore because we're coping with a lie of things we've exchanged it for. Maybe drinking, smoking, self-harm, addictive behaviors, excessive shopping, eating. We start to believe a lie that we are no good enough to carry God's truth. And we are not worthy of God's love and grace because we messed up. Maybe we've messed up really bad. We seek answers, but we can't find them because our priorities are not in the right order. We've given up and trying to just live life day by day. What happens, though, is we get into a darkness we are frantically trying to get out of. We realize what we are missing and what we need, why we are lost. We rush around looking, trying to find our receipt. We can't find it. We fall to our knees in tears, asking for God for help, to please help us, because we realize we have thrown away that receipt. We've thrown away that truth and exchanged it for a lie. We're begging God to come back to us, to heal us, fill our lives again, give us hope, grace, and love. We're on our knees broken and not sure what to do now, because the one thing that was the good news that we needed, we threw away out of our own pride that we could do it on our own. When in fact, he has been there the whole time. We have attempted to walk away from God, from our own pride and deception. We may have thrown away the receipt and thought there was no redemption. But Jesus is always there waiting for us to return to him. This truth cannot be hidden. It cannot be thrown away. It cannot be destroyed. Because God is an all-powerful and cannot be deceived. He is not fake. He is not science. He is God. When we are fallen, broken, and hit by a spiritual two-by-four, we then go and seek others to help us. It could be a parent, a pastor, a youth pastor, teacher, leader. We return to worship at church. People seek help in many ways. This brings me to a question that most commonly asked in ministry work. Why does this all matter? I want to use an illustration that we can relate to in order to answer that question. Gas. Gas is an essential need for our vehicles to run. We as humans have our own tank of mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional fuel that we need to continue to be filled. So I'm going to ask the youth in the room 
just by a show of hands if you know what all these numbers on the gas tank means. Does anybody know what all those numbers mean? Just raise your hand if you know what it means. They don't know what the numbers mean. Now I'm going to ask all the adults in the room. By a show of hands, youth, turn around, look behind you. Do you know what these numbers on the gas tank means? If you put the wrong fuel in your fuel tank, you will have a dire, costly consequence to your vehicle. Avi and Maddie can give you a very good example of that when they accidentally put diesel fuel in a road ranger. So, <laughs> again, you ask, why does this matter? Did you know that 70% of pastors don't believe in a literal six-day creation? Did you know many churches will preach everyone gets to heaven? Did you know pastors will preach that works-based faith gets you to heaven? So my question to you, if works gets you to heaven, what was the purpose of Jesus? The truth is here. The gospel is here. But churches are struggling to preach it because people are struggling to hear it. Hearing the truth can be difficult. But if you're filling your spirit with a lie or an incorrect gas as our application, you will suffer a costly consequence to your salvation. If you are filling the fuel tank of others with the wrong fuel, the lie, you will cause them to stumble and they could have a costly consequence to their salvation from what we are teaching them. We as adults know what is needed in our fuel, in our gas tanks, in our vehicles. However, most people, as you saw, none of our youth knew what they were or what they meant. It is our responsibility to teach the youth, the children, other believers, and even non-believers the right fuel that they need in their lives to fill their tanks. Make sure you're fueling your spirit with the correct fuel, the true gospel, and keeping the receipt. This is why teaching the true gospel matters. This is why making sure our church is on the same page of what we believe matters. This is why church camp and bringing kids to camp to hear the gospel truth matters. This is why we need to get priorities of life back into place and get our families and youth back into church. Whether you're a member here or a member of a different church visiting or listening to me online and you don't have a church and you need a home church, we invite you here. But we need to get back into church so we can get our life back on track with the one and only true God. I saw a post on the youth pastor's page once that was encouraging youth pastors to share as the world gets crazier by the day. It is a truth that I've seen far too often, and it says, If we do not teach our child to follow Jesus, the world will teach them not to. So our big idea for today, if we don't teach the youth of today to keep the receipt, to spread the true gospel and know and believe that the world will carry them away in deception and lies? What is your next step to make, your, make sure your child is on the ark? There is a meme that was on Facebook. I don't know if anybody saw it a few days ago, but comes through around every so often. And every time I see it, I share it. And the meme says, tonight during the message, my nine-year-old son, Jay, came to the realization that the children who were not on the ark didn't make it. He looked at me with such a sad, questioning face. All I could say was, their parents didn't make sure that they were on the ark. The weight of that statement still weighs on me. Of all things that I do for the kingdom of God, nothing is more important than making sure that my children find their way to a relationship with Jesus. So maybe it's bringing your family back to church and prioritizing your faith more. Maybe it's signing your kids up for church camp to help them build a strong foundation to battle the lie and deception. Maybe it's giving your life to Christ because you haven't even done that yet. And this world is scary right now, and you are lost or confused. Whatever it is, whatever God is laying on your heart to do, I pray that you will submit to his calling out to you wherever you are right now. And always remember that the truth and that God is never false, never fake, and is never a false science. So keep the receipt. Keep spreading the good news. And together, we will help continue to build the kingdom.
I'm going to ask Pastor Ryan to come forward for our invitation, please. Yeah. 